Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This one's all about motivation, inspiration, and workflow. Today we're gonna to talk about three tips in each one of those areas to help you make better art and have more fun making the art that you make. So let's talk about all the warm and fuzzy stuff first and then we're gonna get down to the nuts and bolts of workflow. First of all, what does it take to get good at anything? Whether it's art or sports or music or cooking or anything like that. It's some combination of talent and hard work. A uh, long time ago, somebody told me a phrase that I've lived by my whole life, which is hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And the reality is, is that most of us aren't born with talent. Most of us have to work really hard to get good at anything that we want to do, no matter what it is. And sometimes there's things that can stand in the way of that hard work and that can make it even harder. And so what we want to do is we want to try and come up with ways that we can get around those roadblocks that get put in front of us. Um, roadblocks to our inspiration and to our motivation. And um, a lot of that is through the workflow. And that's where the subject to this video came from. You know, most of us aren't born with talent, so hard work is the only path that we have to get good at something. You know, they say that you have to put in 10,000 hours to become a master of something, and any fraction of that anywhere along the way is going to help determine how good you get at something. And sometimes those things are very mechanical, like, it, you know, computer coding or things like that, where they're very quantitative how you get good at them. Art is very different because art's a really subjective thing. So whether it's making music or painting or photography or videography or graphic design or things like that, when you're doing art, there is this additional wrench that gets thrown in the mix and that is the subjective piece of what's good and what's not good. And that's being judged by others, but most importantly, it's often that it's being judged by ourselves. We judge our own art very harshly, um, in a lot of cases more harshly than others do, and that can be a major roadblock to our motivation and our inspiration. You know, creating art is, is really a convergence of that hard work slash talent piece with motivation and inspiration. A lot of that is done through the workflow. Um, how we create art, creating systems that allow us to be creative without it becoming systemic. You know, when you have to have all of those pieces of motivation and inspiration and workflow and talent and, and hard work, when you have to have all those things converging in order to make art, you know, it, it's, it's rare. And often one or more of those things isn't working and that's okay. What we need to do is have some strategies to get around those things when they're not working. So first off, let's talk about what happens when we have a lack of inspiration. Um, this happens a lot when you know people get writer's block or um, you know just they're not just not feeling it. You know that's the inspiration. That's the kind of warm and fuzzy part of of creating art. What can you put in place as far as a system to help you get over those lack of inspiration? Well, these are the top three things that I do. Number one, step away for a minute. And you hear this a lot, but step away with purpose. Don't just abandon your art. Don't just abandon your creative process, but step away in favor of something that inspires you outside of your art, something that inspires you from a different area. Maybe it's a different type of art. Maybe it is cooking or you know, if you're a visual artist, maybe it's music. If you're a musician, maybe it's visual art. Look for other things that inspire you out in the world. For some, it's doing an activity. Maybe it's going for a walk. Maybe it's photography. Maybe it's, you know, playing with your kids, playing with your dog. Whatever it is that inspires you and that motivates you, step away from your creative process in favor of some of those things. And then when you come back to your creative process, you'll find that you're inspired to get back into doing your art. Number two is go away from your own creative process and enjoy your particular art, but through the eyes of other artists that also do your art. 
and it might be in a different medium, it might be in a different genre. So for example, just recently I watched this amazing video of a jazz drummer named Larnell Lewis who learned a metal song, um, learned a Metallica song by listening to it one time through and then played it perfectly back afterwards. And it was just amazing. It was really inspirational to see another musician, another artist doing his art and also pushing himself outside of his comfort zone. I'll link to that video down in the description. It's absolutely amazing. You should check it out. Even if you're not a drummer, even if you're not into jazz or metal, check it out. It's absolutely amazing to see the talent of this guy. You can also check out other artists that are within your genre. So for example, you know, I do underground techno and house music. So I like to listen to other artists in my genre, listen to live sets, listen to DJ sets, check out what was the music that got me motivated and inspired to do this in the first place. So listen back to, to old music and old songs and older tracks within my genre. And then also re-listen to some of the music and some of the artists that really inspired me and got me really into this. And maybe, you know, they're artists from when I was a kid, when I was in, in high school, or maybe they're artists that I discovered later on in life, but were older artists or new artists, and they've just really motivated me and pushed me and inspired me to make music. That can help me to want to get right back into it. You see somebody who's really good at doing what you love to do, and it can be really inspirational to get you to want to get in there and, and, uh, and do more of it. Tip number three is um, something that works personally for me a lot um, in the, the type of music that I do, and that is I will sit down and do a sound design session, but without any real purpose. These instruments that are here are really inspirational to me. The, the sounds that they create, the sounds that they're capable of creating, um, and the sounds that you can make, the kind of happy accident sounds that you can make by just messing around with them. So what works really well sometimes is Pick an instrument, one of them, you know, whether it's a drum machine, whether it's a synthesizer, whether it's a, you know, a sampler, whatever it is, connect it to a recorder of some sort, whether that is a, um, an outboard recorder, whether it's your DAW, no matter what it is, connect it to a recorder, hit record, and just start messing around. And play with sounds, play with, um, with you know, mixtures of sounds and creating sounds and totally in the abstract without any direction, without any beat, without any rhythm, without any of that stuff, just play with sound. And those sounds can really be inspirational. You can do this even if you're a live performer, you know, and you play guitar, mess around with your guitar. If you're an electric guitar player, mess around with your pedals, you know, do things that help you uh, rediscover the joy of play the joy of playing your instrument, playing with your art. You know, if you're a graphic designer, if you're a, a visual artist, doodle, sketch, scribble, play with colors, you know, things like that. Anything that you can do, the 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 instruments and the, the medium that you use to create your art will talk back to you. So play around with it and have fun doing it and get away from the, uh, the mechanics of this has to be a work session. I have to do a track. I'm gonna do this particular type of track, okay? Get into the play and that can really help with your inspiration. The next thing I wanna talk about is lack of motivation. Um, now, very different from inspiration. Inspiration is the aha, I've got this amazing creative, uh, the creative juices are flowing in an amazing way. The lack of motivation can be the lack of desire to even keep going or even get started. I watched this really interesting video lately and I'll, I'll post a link to this one in the, in the description down below as well. It was basically talking about expectations and perfection and striving for perfection and perfectionism, particularly when you're creating art. And the idea that perfect is a state. It is one thing and 99.999 things that have any type of flaw at all are imperfect and therefore you'll be let down by them. So if we're striving for perfection all the time, we can get to this really demotivated state where our own uh, desire to be perfect or to attain the perfect gets in the way of 
improving and enjoyment and inspiration and motivation. And it can be really demotivating. Our own expectations of the outcome of our art can really be a killer of our own motivation. And the three things to think about uh, where motivation in creating your art is concerned are, number one, art from the perspective of the creator is never perfect. Sometimes you can see perfect art as somebody who's enjoying someone else's art and it's perfect for you in the moment, what you needed at that very time. Keeping in mind that your imperfect art may be perfect for someone else. And if we're striving for it to be perfect for us, we're gonna be disappointed pretty much all the time with anything that's anything less than absolutely perfect for us in the moment. Because our definition of perfect is different at any given time, what's perfect for this moment may not be perfect for another moment, it means that we're always trying to hit this impossible moving target of perfection. You know, and what I do, you know, with techno music, for example, the song that's perfect in, you know, an underground warehouse party at four o'clock in the morning when you've been going for, you know, 10 hours, you're surrounded by your best friends, you're exhausted, and then you hear this song, that song might be perfect at that moment. But if you're chilling out around a swimming pool at noon on the beach in the tropics, that same song is not going to be the perfect song for that moment. So when you're producing music or any other kind of art, just remember that it may not seem perfect to you at the moment, but it may be perfect for someone else's moment. The second point in motivation is very much with the idea of perfection, but it's also the, the idea of when it's time to be done, when it's time to move on, um, when it's time to accept something for what it is and appreciate it and be done with that and move on to the next thing. Uh, that same video that I watched that I'm gonna link in the description down below had a great expression that I'd never heard before and it really stuck in my head. It said, when you're creating something, learn to know the difference between that's good enough and that's good enough. Is it good enough? So you're just kind of settling and going, yeah, whatever, I'm done with it, I'm just gonna move on. Or are you willing to accept, hey, that's good, enough. I can stop with this one now, I can be finished, and I can actually let myself move on to the next thing. And number three on motivation, it's gonna sound like a cliche because it's become a cliche in every you know industry right now and all the, the, the uh, the big influencers are talking about this, but it's it really means something in the creation of art. And that is, you need to love the process. If you are striving for completion, striving for perfection, striving for uh, a, this moving target, unattainable goal, and not really enjoying the process of actually creation, you know, being a creator of art, being a creator of music, being a creator of paintings, a creator of, you know, videos, a creator of photography. Being that and doing that and loving that process of, of the creation of something is the key to motivation. If you love making art, you will be motivated to make art. If you just love having a finished product, getting through the process of creating that product seems never ending and it seems like a nightmare. Take a look at yourself and what you do and really figure out why do you make art? Why do you make music? What's the reason behind it? And let that motivate you. If the reason is achieving a goal of, you know, being rich and famous and traveling around the world or whatever, that can motivate you, but it can, because it's such a difficult to achieve goal that's only achieved by a tiny fraction of people, and most of them probably aren't making the art that you love to make, it makes it a demotivating goal. You want your goals to be things that push you forward and that motivate you. Something that I heard recently that, that really helps with all of this is 
rather than saying, I want to make music, say to yourself, I want to be someone who makes music and really push yourself to focus on the process of what you do. I don't want to necessarily be, you know, a rich, famous music producer. I want to be someone who makes music. And if that is good enough for fame and fortune and, and notoriety and things like that, great. But you'll be motivated along the way because you're motivated by the process, by being someone who makes music, by being someone who does the art, rather than uh, being defined by your end product only. So again, just think back to why you do it and love the process. As cliche as it is, loving the process is the biggest key to long-term motivation of doing anything. Now that we've gotten through the warm and fuzzy ones, let's talk a little bit about workflow. This is the one that's a little bit more mechanical and more systemic, but it can really have an impact on the other two. If you have a really good workflow, it won't be a roadblock to your motivation and it will allow you to create when you have inspiration. My number one workflow tip for reducing friction in your, your overall process is just that, reduce friction. Have everything ready to go when you have the time and when you have the motivation. Maybe that is, you know, having your guitar already tuned. Maybe it's having your gear already connected to one another. So when you switch it on, everything's ready to go. Maybe it's having a template in your DAW if you produce in a DAW. Maybe it's having a template in your, um, your music production hardware. So for example, in your drum machine, maybe you have certain drum kits that you like that you've already got set up and they're ready to go whenever the inspiration strikes you. When I sit down to write a track in my Dollis setup, for example, I have um, in my analog rhythm, I have it set up with this filtered down kick, which just sounds just like that. And I've got that on a channel that I always leave it on. So if I want to start to create something, I know for me personally, when I want to write music, there is nothing that kills the vibe faster than the click of a metronome. But sometimes you want to write something freeform. You don't want to program it in. You want to write it to a tempo or whatever. And for me, metronome kills that. So I have this filtered down kick drum that I just put on in the background. And while I'm messing around with stuff, I've got that as kind of a, a drum beat. And if I decide that I want to record something, I can record and I'm already recording to that tempo, but I'm doing it to something that isn't driving my motivation in one direction or another. It's just filtered all the way down to the bare minimum of a kick drum. It's not a kick drum that says, hey, this is a, a house track. Hey, this is a techno track. Hey, this is a, you know, a peak time. This is dub techno. This is whatever. It's not saying any of those things. It's just keeping time, but it's keeping time in a way that helps me with my creative process. Something else that really helps with reducing friction in your workflow and that the idea of having everything ready is if you are producing in a DAW, I would recommend setting up a template. Uh, for example, here in my studio, and I'm going to do another video with a tour around the studio and a little bit more specific about my in-depth workflow um, and how I use hardware and software together. But within my DAW, I have a template set up that is my default template anytime I say open a new program. And that already has my hardware synths routed to individual channels. It already has, you know, low cut filters where I want to have them. It already has, you know, a limiter where I want to have it just to keep things from clipping while I'm messing around by accident. It already has the synths that I like on individual channels. It already has um, the drum kits already loaded up that are the ones that I like to use by type of music. So if I know I'm going to sit down and create a certain genre, I've got a drum kit of you know, a palette of instruments to choose from within that drum kit that are already set up and ready to go. So I'll do another video about how to set up templates in Ableton Live as well as how to set up templates on the analog, uh, sorry, on the electron machines. Um, but having templates really helps to reduce that friction. It gives you a way to sit down and start right away. Nothing kills the vibe besides the, the metronome. Nothing kills the vibe faster 
then sitting down to create music and having the first thing you have to do is, okay, I'm gonna load up a track, I'm gonna start this, I'm gonna find a sound, I'm gonna look around for this, and you end up going on for hours and hours and hours messing around with that one snare sound. Well, get some things that you like that are a way for you to kind of get the creative juices flowing and then keep that going and then you can always go back and change those sounds out, but get the ones set up in a template that are the most inspirational for you to get started. My number two tip in workflow and reducing friction is to divide your uh, creative tasks into different work sessions. Um, and this is a great thing to do when you have a lack of motivation and you don't have that kind of creative inspiration. Sit down and organize things so that they're ready for when it's time to actually create when you do have some inspiration and when you have some motivation. So do, do sound design. Um, do sound design sessions and sit down and create kick drums, create, you know, bass sounds, create synth patches, create loops that you're going to use later on. Um, do that kind of creative sound design that I talked about a little while ago, where you just record a bunch of stuff um, in one session. And then maybe in another work session, you actually go in and listen back to what you recorded, chop it up into usable pieces, usable parts, loops, uh, individual one hit samples and things that you can use in your, your creative process. So that way you're not trying to do everything in every session because that can get really confusing and convoluted and it can really kill the, the inspiration. If it's like, oh, I've got this great idea. Now I need to go through 10 folders of kick drums to find the one that I like to sound good with this rather than having a template already done and having that set up. And those templates are created during those divided up sessions where you might have one session where you're doing sound design and you're putting those sounds away. You're saving those uh, presets and or those samples that you created. Another one where you're doing sound design and you're just recording improv and creating unique, interesting sounds with a particular instrument and you save that away for a sound design chop it up session and then you've got all those things organized so the next time you sit down you're like a painter that already has the palette with all of the paints that you want to use in this particular uh, painting set out on the palette so you've got the ones that you're going to choose from to create this new piece of art so all you need to do then is be creative and be inspired and my third tip on workflow is to practice the most at the things that you want to get good at. Now, that may seem obvious, but in music production in particular, um, a really good friend of mine, Jason Timothy, and I'll link to his, uh, his YouTube channel down below. He does great tutorials on Ableton Live and on finishing music, and he's written a great book that you should check out as well. Um, one of the things he talks about a lot is finishing music is the key because your first hundred tracks that you create are gonna suck no matter what. So why not get them out of the way as quick as you can? Don't spend so much time trying to make those hundred tracks amazing because they're not gonna be amazing no matter what. So practice what you want to get good at, practice that the most. So if you're having difficulty, as 99% of the music producers out there do, if you're having difficulty finishing tracks, practice finishing tracks. Don't just practice making tracks. If you practice making and not finishing tracks, you're gonna get really good at making and not finishing tracks. If what you practice the most is making eight bar and 16 bar loops that never turn into songs, you're gonna get really good at making eight bar and 16 bar loops that never turn into songs. One of the biggest barriers, one of the biggest blocks that most music producers have and artists in general and a lot of different creative art forms is finishing their work. So if we can get over the idea of perfection and we can know when something is good, and that it's enough and we should move on. And we can work on getting to that state as often as possible, practicing finishing. Even if you're finishing something that's not great, you're finishing. And what you're doing is you're practicing finishing. And the great part, making it great, comes from doing it more often. It comes from repetition. It comes from those 10,000 hours. It comes from the hard work overcoming the talent that we talked about earlier on. So 
practice finishing as a mechanical task. And if you do that enough through the process of finishing songs, you're gonna get better and better and better at making the songs while you're becoming an expert at finishing songs. Hopefully some of this struck a chord with you and it can help you get over some of those uh, creative blocks that we all face in our creative process. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell so you'll be notified every time I put out another video about things like this, creative process, uh, making music, the music industry, and all that sort of stuff. Thanks very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And uh, see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.